All right, guys, so I recently made this tutorial where I showed you how to display your stock level on your product page. This was like a simplified tutorial for products that did not have variants like size, color. And what you do is simply add a custom liquid block. And then with just a few lines of code, you can display your stock count. However, like I said, it doesn't work when you have variants. So you see I'm switching these variants and this number does not switch. And that's because we need more code than this. We need to use JavaScript to update this number every time when we switch, uh, similar to the price, for example, how it changes every time when we switch. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can do that. And I'm also going to help you make it a little bit better rather than using this custom liquid where we add code in here, we're going to make it a whole new block type. Okay, so you'll be able to see this new block called inventory count under this drop down. Uh, you don't see it now, because I'm already using it, but you'll be able to see inventory count. And when you add it, it will appear like so, you will be able to drag it around, you'll be able to add it to different templates. So it's more useful in that way. And I've also added some settings for it. So you can change the color, you can make it red, for example, if you want a sense of urgency, and you can also change the threshold at which this message shows up. So if you only want it to show how many are left in stock, when there are maybe less than 10 in stock, then you can do that by inputting the number 10. So now you will see that I only have five left in stock of the 200 mil. But when we change to 500 mil, of which I have 20 in stock, it will disappear. If you want to show the stock at all times, regardless of how many are in stock, so you don't want any threshold, just put the number zero. And it will always show. So here we have 20. Here we have five. Now you will need to copy and paste code for this tutorial. And you can find all of that on my site, go to ed.codes, and then go to tutorials, and then find this tutorial called display variant inventory count. Okay, and I'm going to take you through the steps. So let's get started with the tutorial, I'm going to switch to a different theme that does not have this work done. We're going to go through it together. The theme I'm using is Dawn. If you do have a little bit of coding experience, you probably will be able to take my idea and apply it to any other theme. But if you don't, then I think you will probably need some help from a developer. Feel free to contact me and I may refer you to the right person or company. Here I am on the themes page. And I'm going to go into the customizer for the theme that I want to edit. So the first thing that you want to do is open up the customizer and navigate to any product page. I'm going to navigate to my test product here. And the second thing that you want to do is open the code editor. So click on these three dots here and click on edit code. And I'm going to control click to open that in a new tab. Because I want to be looking at both of these things at the same time and working on both. So when we enter the code editor, the first thing I want to do is find a file called main product dot liquid. That's where we will add the block schema. Okay, the block schema is what defines a new block what creates a new type of block. So let's open main product. I mean, let's search for main product dot liquid. Here it is. And we want to add this code, all of that code, and we want to add it into the schema, which is usually at the bottom which is always at the bottom of a, of a liquid file. Okay, so here's the end schema. Here's the, um, the start of the schema. And this defines all of our block types. So you can see that there's like collapsible tab, custom liquid, text, there's the pop up block type in dawn, I'm just going to go to this one quantity selector, and you can search for it by the way using control F or command F. And so after this comma here. So this is the quantity selector block. This is where it's defined. After this comma, we're going to go new line, you're going to tab in because we want to keep this neat all in one line and readable. And you're going to copy from here, including that last comma and paste into here. Okay, if it doesn't paste like this, if it's somehow screwed up, you know, if it's like this, 
try to fix it. You can use tab and shift tab to move things. All the brackets have to be in line. If you see a bracket and you don't see any other brackets, then line this up. And after each one, there should be a comma, except for the last one. Just to explain briefly, this is our inventory threshold setting that I showed you. And this one is our color setting. You can hit save. This should appear as a new type of block here. So hit refresh in your theme editor, theme customizer, and click on add block. And you will be able to see inventory count. It's a new block. Okay, so we've added it, but nothing appears here right? That's because we haven't actually written anything that should be output when you add this block, we've just created the setting in the schema. Now we need to add the actual code that will be output when you add this block. So that's step two: create the HTML that is output when you see when inventory count, meaning when that block is added to the page. So let's go back up and see where blocks are actually added to the page, we can see for block in section dot blocks. And these are all the block types when app when text when title when price, right when custom liquid, when quantity selector when pop up. So as before, I'm just going to put it after the quantity selector. It actually doesn't matter where you put these but for me it just makes sense. I think it's like this relates kind of to quantity. So we're going to do this. Again, we want it to be neat, we want all these whens to line up. So I'm going to highlight this by holding shift and clicking. And then I'm going to tab in so that these divs are inside. And then this when oops, I'm just going to line it up like that. So that looks good. Now I can see all different block types when, 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 okay and ours fits right in really nicely. Let's hit save. And now it should actually output something. So here's our inventory count block right at the end and it says only five left in stock. Great. So it's working. Let's move it under the quantity selector here. Okay. And by the way, this is just the old method that I showed you in the previous video. So I might actually hide that for now. So it's not confusing. I'm also going to make that red just so we can easily see it and we can test. So it's not working yet for variants. And that's because we need to add the last part, which is the JavaScript that changes this number whenever we change variants. So let's save for now. And just before we do the JavaScript part, I want to show you what this code actually says. So this is a div, it's just a container. Um, with our section ID, and so it's the container for the block, but inside, we have an if statement. And then inside of that, we have our actual text, our paragraph. So you can change this if you want to change the wording, because I know you'll want to change this, you may not only want it to say only five left in stock, you may want it to say, uh, we have five remaining, or something like that. So yeah, that's where you would change this text. So I'll explain what's going on here. Here in between the curly braces is the part that you should not change. This actually outputs our inventory quantity. So it's the product selected or first available variant and then inventory quantity. So that's the most important part. Don't lose this part. Now this part is wrapped in strong tags, meaning it's bold. You can remove these if you want. So you would just remove the closing tag and remove the opening tag. Okay, and it will stop being bold. And then you of course have the text left in stock here and the word only here at the start. So you can completely, you know, remove that and change that text to whatever you want. However, don't change the paragraph tags. And most importantly, don't get rid of this part which outputs the number. So finally, let's add the JavaScript so that actually switching the variants will update our number here. Okay, so we're looking for a file called global.js. And once again, we can just search for that file global.js. And in this file, because this is a, a rather long file, we're going to look for a function called render product info. Okay, like so you'll find it here. 
and you'll find it defined lower down the page. So render product info, we're going to add our code in here, we're going to look at how the price is being updated and kind of piggyback off that. So the first line is this const inventory, just as price variable is being defined, we're going to define our inventory like so make sure it lines up so that it's nice and neat. I put it under the price, right? And then the next line is going to go under this if price because we're also going to have if inventory. If inventory, we're going to unhide and run the function update inventory. So paste this here. And you might want to save this is the first part done. Next, we're going to add our actual update inventory function. This is what does most of the work. And we're going to add this directly below uh, this render product info function. So find the last kind of the last curly brace of that, make a, a, a few spaces, I mean, a few enters, and paste that in at the same level, right, the same level of indentation, keep things neat and readable. So we're going to save and that should already be working. We're just going to do one last thing and that is set unavailable. So this is just just, just in case type thing. So the price is usually hidden if a variant is unavailable or if a, a variant combination is unavailable. So once again, here under const price, we have our const inventory that I got from here. And at the very bottom, we hide the inventory if the price is unavailable, if the sorry, if the variant is unavailable. So the same as price, we're just literally copying what the price is doing. That is all. Now we refresh. And fingers crossed, this should work. I did not try this before recording. So yes, it works. And there we go. That's the end of the tutorial. Once again, if you don't want to show 20, if you want to show less than 10, you know, put a 10 in here, it won't show 20 left in stock, but it will show five left in stock. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Now it's time for my little advertising of my upcoming course. It's called Shopify coding for store owners. It's going to help you do a lot more things like this, things that are easy enough to code on your own, without the use of an app, or at least to better understand what's going on here and be able to make your own modifications if you want to. I haven't released it yet, but you can subscribe and you'll get an email when I publish my course. It's really I think the only course of this type because I think most courses are focused towards people who want to be developers towards junior developers or people learning Shopify development. But this one is really for you for the store owner. And it's going to introduce you to the very basics of HTML and CSS and then in a very practical way, show you how you can use that immediately on your Shopify store without a lot of the theory and without wasting your time. So it's going to be maybe like a three or four hour course. And it's going to be very direct, very to the point and show you immediately how you can start doing things on your Shopify store. So that's all I want to say. If you have any questions, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.